Police have also released shocking video of a crash that could have caused a major injury to an officer. The sergeant says he was near his motorcycle during a traffic stop last Tuesday when another driver rear-ended him. We want to warn you, the video you're about to see may be disturbing to some. <laughs> That's what it looked like and sounded like and how close that SUV came to the sergeant. The officer is entering information when the SUV crashes into his motorcycle, grazes the officer and then drives off. The officer had only minor injuries and warned drivers to be careful of motorcyclists as the weather is warming up. With our society nowadays, we're too focused on looking at GPS's and phones and everything going on. Put this stuff away and focus on what you're, you're doing driving at hand. Uh, driving's a very dangerous, dangerous thing to be doing. Uh, you're driving a 2,000 pound bullet. Officers did later find the SUV driver and arrest them. They are being charged with hit and run causing injury, inattentive driving and driving without a valid license. With farmers starting to work in their fields now, motorists might start to see some tractors or other farm equipment on the roads, perhaps right in front of them going maybe slowly. Yeah, that's for sure. They held a safety demonstration this morning in Southern Brown County and Fox Loans' Eric Peterson was there. When a farmer sits in the cab of their tractor, they're typically thinking about safety. And Wednesday morning on a closed county road, that theory was put to the test. It's springtime and planting is starting. So we want to look at sharing the road between farm equipment and our motoring public. Cheryl Skolis is a UW Extension safety expert and is coordinating the event. The first test involves someone following close behind and then trying to pass the 65,000 pound tractor and planter combo on a hill. The next demonstration includes passing in a no passing zone. Skolis says farm equipment is allowed to drive on the road. We don't want them off on that shoulder. Um, it's harder on the roadway to be part on the road, part on the shoulder. It's a lot more complex for people to make that decision of, of what they're doing. She says farm equipment wider than 15 feet needs to have flashing lights. This is what happens when a car tries to pass the tractor, signaling to turn into this field. You like to pass and it can be very dangerous. Dan Brick owns Brickstead Dairy and hosted the event. He says he's had some close calls. Oh yeah, every year we always have a couple of them. You know, it's a, you're ready to take a left turn, especially, and, and that person doesn't realize that, you know, you're pulling into the farm driveway or whatever that is. Brick says planting season is approaching. We were hoping to be out in the field. We're getting closer. Uh, obviously, the, the weather has been very yeah, cool and wet um, as of late, but uh, when that window gets tighter, it means more and more equipment on the road. Suicide is the second most common cause of death among college students, and student athletes are not excluded from that. Yeah, a recent example in Madison when a University of Wisconsin cross-country runner took her own life. Fox Loves Nick Harrington has more in this Project Education report. Student athletes show off their athletic ability in many ways, but like others, they still face struggles pertaining to their mental health. There's an increased pressure for students to be successful and less of a clear path of how that success might be accomplished. Assistant Director of Counseling and Psychological Services at St. Norbert College, Thomas Doofman, says that's just one reason for student athletes reporting anxiety or depression. He says parents have been well-intended in this generation, wanting their children to be successful, but it comes with a consequence. The problem is that it's made it more difficult for uh, young people to experience a failure, go through that process, realize that they can uh, learn from it and actually get better. While wanting to be great is the goal for student athletes, not living up to their own expectations can be bothersome. There's a lot of pressure to be the best all the time, and that's why we have people as young as 12 being recruited for pro soccer teams in Europe. Uh, and 
that's kind of a lot of pressure to put on somebody who's not yet been through middle school. In late 2021, the American College of Sports Medicine said about 30% of female and 25% of male student athletes report having anxiety. But only 10% of all college athletes with known mental health conditions see care. Doofman offers this as a reason why. Historically, there was a big stigma about mental health issues. There still is that concern, but anxiety and depression are so common and pervasive that it's been talked about and dealt with quite a bit. Without a sports psychologist, student athletes can still receive care. We do have uh, direct contact with all the coaches and the athletic director and athletic teams about any issues that come up.